So we're going to add some annotation to our detail that we've sort of worked up. I haven't quite finished off these bits and pieces, but uh, the principles have been laid out. Um, now we're going to look at uh, some dimensions and some text is there. We've got these tags and um, more importantly, we've got this keynoting option as well. So I've just had a little look around to see what sort of stuff we can do. And um, we'll start off with the easy bits. It's all fairly easy. Um, knowing the, what the materials are is more important, I suppose. Uh, but we'll start off with adding dimensions. So let's give some dimensions to this, and then we modify the dimensions. And if we decide, um, there's one thing to point out with dimensions. Linear dimension doesn't work. Okay, you can't use linear dimension. It's not selecting anything. If I click, nothing's happening. So I have to go to the aligned dimension, even though I'm using sort of a linear dimension element. Uh, the aligned dimension tool is the thing that um, picks up these objects. So let's say I'm doing the depth of the floor, and I'll just pop that in. So notice when I go beyond that, the dotted line boundary, it disappears. So just be careful of that. And I will put in the floor deck thickness, which is 211 millimeters. Now, if you want to adjust any of this stuff, the way it looks, um, it's offset, all that sort of stuff, then edit type is where you need to go. And this is similar to the um, dimension style dialog box that you might be familiar with in AutoCAD. All of the type properties are listed in here, and there are quite a few of them. So it relates to the leader lines and the dimension line, the offset distance, the tick mark, all the sort of stuff that we're familiar with. So we've got a tick mark, which is um, diagonal 1.5. The line weight is one, so that will be for this. And then the tick line weight is, can't zoom in anymore, is at four. Um, dimension string type continuous so all these sorts of different bits and pieces we've got down here what you notice um, in here is there's no if you want to suppress the dimensions you can't do it or the units let's say you can't do it in here um, if I went to the text um, or the units format you will notice it's got this little tick box here saying um, use project settings uh, I could untick that and then it allows me to display none if I said okay then and then okay to that or apply it then the dimensions disappear if I didn't want to do that individually I wanted to do it more globally then if I just go back to this and uh, reset it to project settings and I went okay and okay that then these dis reappear um, I'd have to go up to the manage tab and then my project units and under my length units just unit symbol none okay okay and then that disappears again globally so it's entirely up to you whether you want to display the units or not now another nice little feature is this edit witness line it allows me to if I click on it to add another witness line to this okay so it's not like moving these things it's adding an extra one so it's like putting a continuous dimension type thing in we've already created the dimension so I'm going to use this to split it up a bit so I'm going to click there and then make sure you click a second time somewhere and that will set that dimension so instead of it being 211 it's now 51 and 160 so we've divided up the concrete topping from the structural deck okay so that's a little bit about uh, adding dimensions let's say for example I wanted to back on the annotate tab put um, an angular dimension in just to say that the angle between that and that is 90 degrees then it's a simple case of clicking on the two lines that make up the degree and then clicking a third time so nothing too tricky about dimensions at all so it brings us on to text next now i'm going to ignore keynotes for a second and certain things like this element here which is the detail element it's a filled region if i click on that um, and go to the edit type there's no keynoting parameter in the identity data whereas if i click on something like this and click edit type then we do have a keynote parameter that we can populate um, for later on. So as I can't use keynotes for this, I'd have to actually put a bit of text into this to say that it was a curtain wall system panel. And so I would do that with my annotate tab, use the text tool, and then we get these text options. So that's um, no leader, that's uh, one segment, this is a curved leader, and this is a two segment leader. So if I wanna use 
a two segment leader then I'll click on that and I can click on this panel and move it up and then that's the first bit the second click is for the elbow and then the third click is to start the text and I like to call this um, solid panel solid insulated panel or something okay so that's uh, a simple process of putting that stuff in and again any information that you want to add to that that you can on modify to deselect um, we've got a little grip handle here but again make sure it doesn't go beyond that boundary otherwise you're gonna lose it so let's drag that back so we can see it double click to edit um, this is rotate and again this wraps the text as well so it's entirely up to you how you want to use those things but that's the sort of thing that you could put in for the text the other thing about this text is that under the edit type it's currently three and a half mil aerial so I could click the drop down and go for two and a half mil aerial so that's going to tie up with the size of the dimension text so again you're keeping everything nice and balanced so you just keep an eye out for these sorts of things I certainly will be when I'm looking at your work and add as much information as you can we've already got these things in there so it's a question of just populating it with a bit more information so we've got double glazed panels here and here these are not keynoted either so again we've got a similar situation where we need to put in some text so this time I'll set that to two and a half mil aerial I'll use a similar thing and it's tracking up from that one so I can kind of get the same bit and again it's tracking up from that so I know I've got the right position so double glazed unit and we'll leave it at that okay so uh, a little bit about dimensions and a little bit about text the next thing that we look at is adding um, keynotes now certain elements will be already um, keynoted something like these columns for example if I use the keynote and uh, element keynote that should appear on this structural carcassing member uh, it's not liking that one it certainly won't like this because it doesn't know what it is um, or these sorts of things okay but this one for example if I click there then I can position that not as neatly but anyway it's in there and the reason it's saying structural carcassing um, metal or timber is because it's been already assigned a keynote in the type properties so if I clicked on this thing I went to edit type even though it's column rectangular it's giving me under keynote G so that's what's defining this thing structural carcassing metal or timber even though it's concrete so it's not accurate so what we'd need to do is go back to the type property and look at our keynoting and then click on this little ellipsis symbol and think about maybe some in situ concrete precast concrete instead so e and reinforcement for in situ design joints work so precast concrete floor roof decks in situ concrete let's go that one so we we'll go in situ concrete eo5 watertight concrete exposed concrete this one here okay so exposed concrete eo5 510 something like that and let's go okay to that and then okay to that and this is now going to change from what it was to what it should be or similar if we wanted to see the value and not the text then if I just click away from that and click away from this select this and my annotation tag keynote which is standard if I look at the edit type options then I can tick the keynote value and untick the keynote text and apply that and then that's going to give me this value instead okay so if I can have both if I want and click apply and I've got both the description and the value and if I didn't want the arrowhead then I could set this to none and again okay that so a little bit of control with the keynoting as well and again to reposition that and reposition this you got some options there to play around with as well 
Uh, so let's look at a situation where we haven't actually got um, a keynote associated to something simply because uh, we made this as a 2D component. Um, so we'll select it and edit type. And then under the parameters, we've got this keynote option. And we can browse for the keynotes. But where are these stored? Well, they are stored here. But um, if you want to relocate uh, your keynotes or bring them from a different file source, let's just cancel out of this for a second. And if I click away, we can go to this keynote option, which is on the annotate tab, and go down to keynote settings. And you will see that we've got this little keynote table and the file location is on my uh, sort of E drive. Um, in the university, it'll be on a slightly different uh, location, but we've got three different fields. So this is where the library locations are already saved. And this is where this thing is kept. But I could have an absolute path, which would mean that um, it was linked back to a very specific uh, file path or a relative file path, which is everything up to the um, the drive letter but uh, you could have different drive letters with the same um, file structure and that would pick up the keynotes as well or the library locations which are basically in the Revit library okay so this file here the libraries um, alternatively you can browse for a different path as well um, numbering method uh, by keynote or by sheet so we, as we haven't put anything on sheets yet then we'll keep it to by keynote. Um, but if you wanted to sort of organize these keynotes by sheet as well, then you could click on this little uh, radio button. So that's kind of where the keynotes are, and that's how they're set up. We'll say OK to that. And then we'll go back to this um, detail. And because it's the same thing, they'll apply to both elements because it's a type property and click on edit type and go to keynote and we'll click on this little box and we get the ellipsis symbol again so we can click on that and then if we come down to um, cladding I think probably H and then we've got curtain walling or patent glazing curtain walling in this case so that's H11 and then we can click on this one curtain walling um, other elements that we have gaskets weather stripping if we wanted to keynote by a material then we could maybe go into each material bit and add a keynote to that but for this case in point I'll just say OK and now we've got our keynote applied there and then I can say OK to that and then back to my annotate tab uh, to keynote and by element and then I can click on this and now we picks up that keynote and again click and click and that's got that one done and if I just hover over this one click and click and I've got that one done. Check the escape a few more times just to get out of the command. Um, it's picking up the fact that it's the same element and so applying the keynote. Now I'm not suggesting, excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment so you're gonna have to bear with the sniffling and the, uh, the nasaliness. Um, but um, I'm not expecting you to position these things uh, in this sort of random fashion. I would like these things to be lined up as best as possible and just to look as neat as it possibly can. Now for our suspended ceiling, it is a detailed element, so therefore it gives us the opportunity to put a keynote in. And I've had a browse through the um, keynote options, and there's nothing suitable. So I went to the Armstrong website to see whether I could download the specification, but um, I couldn't do that without uh, a lot of faffing. So I've cut and pasted the type of suspended ceiling system that um, I would want to use. So it's a Perla uh, decibel 2095m hash 600 by 600 by 19 mil so this is the type of suspended ceiling system i would want however if you just leave it like that and then say okay and we put a tag in so annotate and back to the keynote and element keynote then we get sort of this option it comes up so if i click on that and then position it and then position it again and then hit escape several times, then I get this bit, but it doesn't give me the opportunity to stretch this out because what it's referencing is the value as opposed to the text. And I know that because if I go into the edit type, then we see that the keynote value is selected and not the text. So I click on the text bit 
and then apply that, we just get this little question mark because there's no text associated simply because um, there's no link back to the data sheet. Okay, so cancel out of that and I'll just click on this and delete it. So what I decided to do then was to open up the text file. This is the re Revit keynote underscore GBR TXD file, which it's referencing for its keynotes. And I've gone down to where I would suggest that this sort of thing exists. So in the f coverings and so under section H, what have we got? Planning and covering. So I've gone right down to the bottom of that and I've added a new category. So H93, suspend ceilings. And I've followed the um, formatting of the other ones. I'm not sure whether this is going to work or not, but so it'll be interesting if it does. So tabbing in, because it's a tab separated value uh, list. So rain screen cladding. Um, then I've gone sort of suspended ceiling. So I've copied that. And then based on some other bits and pieces, I've given it um, a value of H93 and then subcategory 100. And then I've cut and pasted that text value into it. And I could probably just push those back a bit. And have that as lowercase mm. But uh, we can leave that as it is. This is tabbed out from the back of that. So I'm now going to save this. Let's just save that and replace it. So I'll have to give it a new name. So GBR1. And then save that. And I can close this down. So now I need to go back to my keynote settings and I need to browse and we go for this one GBR1 and then we'll open that and it's reloaded successfully okay and then I can say okay to this so now with a bit of luck and the wind behind us we should be able to keynote this thing so let's just click on this bit edit type we can strip this out and then we can browse for this under part H and so we'll go all the way down to 93 there it is suspended ceilings and this one already loaded okay okay and now we can go back to our annotate tab and our keynote by element and then we can click on this and position it all fantastic okay so we've gone a little bit further than I would have anticipated on this but um, Remembering back at the beginning, we looked at putting dimensions in and we've um, amended the um, witness lines by adding an extra one. Text is a piece of cake, really, so you haven't got to worry too much about that. But um, the text, to just make sure everything's lined up nice and neatly and the text sizes kind of stay the same. And then looking at um, adding existing keynotes, modifying keynotes, and modifying the keynote reference file as well so we can add to it. Now, before we move on to the final bit, which is really setting up the sheets, uh, adding content to sheets and uh, printing off the sheets in various different formats, um, we'll have a look at this bit next in the next video, uh, tagging, and just explain the key differences between tags and uh, keynotes. There's a lot more stuff to tagging than there are to keynotes. Okay, so uh, we'll just go through that very briefly, and then you can work out the other bits based on the similar principles. and. We can move on to the final bit of this series.